Hey guys, so what are the first three words that come in your mind when you think about black holes? Probably at least one of them is that they are black. But we have to say, they are not completely black. Why? That's what you'll find out in the next few minutes. Black holes are by definition black. They don't emit light, nothing can escape, and if you come too close to one, you'll be trapped forever. But wait, how can we think black holes are not black at all? Well, first we have to say, there are problems in terms of gravity near black holes. Particles, which come close enough to one of these, won't escape. They'll drop in the black hole, get stretched like spaghetti, and will be destroyed. But there's still particles, which can escape the black hole. They lead to temperature, entropy, and the final destruction of the black hole. Destruction? Yes, destruction. Wait, doesn't this violate all laws of physics? Well, no. In 1975, the upcoming astrophysicist Stephen Hawking proved the theorem, which meant black holes to emit particles. But, we have to say, somehow not the black holes themselves radiate. The space around them radiates particles, caused by the presence of black holes. But an observer, far away, would rather come to the conclusion, it's the black hole radiating particles. Let's explain this in more detail. Quantum mechanics tells us that everywhere in space are quantum fluctuations, also in the vacuum, where no particles are. This means through time particle-antiparticle pairs are created and annihilate themselves short time after. Such pairs are predicted by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Since not both values, the actual energy in a place and the momentum can be known exactly. Since in a vacuum with no particles at all, both of them would be known to precisely zero. Virtual particles have to be created to maintain the uncertainty principle. But near the event horizon, one of these two virtual particles can fall into the black hole and since the other particle cannot annihilate itself now, it flies away and becomes a real particle or antiparticle. But there's also another interesting effect. Since energy cannot be created out of nowhere, those two particles together must have a total energy of zero. Wait, there are two particles and there's no energy. Well, not completely. Both of those particles have a positive amount of mass and exist until the destruction, but only one of them has a positive energy, while the other one has negative. Together, they add up to zero. So from their appearance to their destruction, the law of conservation of energy is not broken, but if one of those particles falls into the black hole, it becomes more complicated. It is guaranteed that always the particle with negative energy falls into the black hole, while the other one, equipped with positive energy, flies away. It can be interpreted, the energy for the now real particles comes from the black hole. No matter on how we interpret this, as a result of the negative energy dropping into the black hole, it shrinks and comes consequently closer to its own destruction. Wait, do we have to be sorrowful for black holes? We don't have to. The temperature caused by this effect is very, very, very close to zero Kelvin. So actually, black holes become bigger because of the cosmic microwave background and don't lose mass in total. But in billions of years, long after Earth and human species, the universe will be even colder than black holes and black holes will lose mass caused by the Hawking radiation and will get finally destroyed. In this process, they would free all the energy which they absorbed once upon. Thanks for watching this video. Check out our channel and subscribe for more awesome videos. See you!